Greetings, I'm Dr. Kim kyung -won, and today I'm going to talk about a case where one casket is used to place implant in the upper posterior area. This is the panoramic x-ray upon patient's initial visit, 55-year-old male patient, number 17, there was severe mobility and pain. If you take a look at the panoramic image, there is a lot of alveolar bone destruction around number 17, and there is a lesion like mucosal within the sinus cavity. Let's look at CT. Clearly, there is a dome-shaped mucosal within sinus cavity, and there's a lot of alveolar bone destruction. The patient complained of severe pain along with mobility and extraction was done after two months. This is the panoramic x-ray. This is two months after extraction. However, alveolar bone is not fully healed. I decided to wait a little bit longer. This is at four months. If you look at this x-ray, there is a somewhat healing here. At initial visit, there was dome-shaped lesion within the sinus cavity. However, now it's gone. I took CT and the lesion was completely gone very frequently when a problematic tooth is taken out. The mucus retention cyst or mucosal thickening within the sinus also disappears. Yes, it may vary depending on the case and it may stay. However, even if the mucosal thickening is severe in most cases, it is restored to the original state. Drastic change can be observed in this case. The lesion is completely gone within the sinus. Looking at CT on the palatal side, the bone healing is still insufficient. If you look at the sectional view, the bone itself, it's not fully healed. I decided to take some more time and wait. Bone looks okay on the mesial side, however, the extraction socket is not fully healed yet. This is after six months since extraction. In comparison, the extraction socket has healed significantly. On CT, the palatal side of the bone is not fully healed. However, alveolar bone looks much more dense. In the extraction socket, healing is still slightly insufficient. However, bone regeneration is done nicely and therefore we decided to have the surgery. If you look at the distal side of number 6, the bone looks quite nice. In order to use one cast kit, I came up with a surgical plan. In number 7, there's approximately 6 to 7 millimeter of residual alveolar bone. At times, you can use short implant. However, I plan for 5.0 by 8.5 millimeter implant. One cast kit was to be used for sinus lift and bone graft. If you look at the surgical plan, from implanted top to the inferior margin of the sinus, the residual bone is approximately at least 6 millimeters. I believe the safe distance is approximately 5 millimeter, and I'm going to use one cast kit for implanted placement. I'm going to use 2.2 initial drill. The safe distance is 5 millimeter, and therefore 7 millimeter drill and 2 millimeter stopper is used to do 5 millimeter drilling. After 2.2, I'm going to use 2.8 and 3.8. I'm going to use the 2 millimeter stopper and 7 millimeter drill to increase the access hole size. In the case of one cast kit, it's different from cast kit. The drill length, the stopper length needs to be deducted from it. I'm going to use 3.8 again, but with 1 mm stopper, drilling up to 6 mm. I'm going to check, and if it's not penetrated, I'm going to drill up to 7 mm. Even then, if the sinus floor is not fully perforated, I'm going to use 10 mm along with 2 mm stopper and drill 8 mm. Once the floor is penetrated, I'm going to do hydro lift to lift the sinus membrane. 
I'm going to use EOS, the bovine bone, for bone graft and place the implant. On the panoramic image, the implant position is going to be like this. In the post-op image, you can see that the implant has been placed to the intended position. In the sinus of floor, bone graft has been grafted at the same time, nicely. On the CT, implant has been placed in the desired position and the sinus membrane is well lifted and it can be observed that sufficient amount of bone graft has been done. On CT, you can see that bone graft has been done nicely and you can see that the implant has been placed in the desired position. Let's look at the surgical clip. One guide template has been adapted to see if it fits well. Mouth mirror is used to check whether the template is placed properly. I'm going to use tissue punch to remove the gingiva as shown. In order to check that this has been done thoroughly, I'm going to remove the template and check. I am checking whether the gingiva has been removed properly. I'm using mouth mirror once again to check punch has been done properly. One guide template is positioned. The residual alveolar bone is approximately 6 mm and safe distance is 5 mm, 2.2 by 7 mm twisted drill with 2 mm stopper is going to be used. Drilling is going to be done up to 5 mm. I'm going to use one cast drill 2.8 by 7 mm with 2 mm stopper. We can use longer drill, but when you use one cast, in order to prevent the perforation of Schneideria membrane, you need to widen the access hole first before using the final drill size. I'm going to drill 5 mm using one cast drill 3.8 by 7 mm with 2 mm stopper. I'm gradually increasing the drill hole size. Drilling up to 5 mm is done. Depth gauge in general is 10 mm, so 5 mm stopper is used. And if you check, you can see that the sinus floor is not penetrated yet. You can see that the depth gauge is not fully in, and there's gap with the template. The sinus floor is yet to be penetrated. I'm going to use 3.8 by 7 mm with 1 mm stopper. I'm going to drill up to 6 mm. So additional 1 mm, 6 mm drilling is done. Drilling has been done up to 6 mm. I'm going to use 4 mm stopper to the depth gauge, making it 6.6 .6 mm. When the stopper is attached, you can see that the depth gauge is not in contact with the template and the sinus floor is not penetrated yet. You can see it with your own eyes as well as with tactile sensation. Next, I'm going to use 7 mm one cast drill without stopper, drilling up to 7 mm. I'm drilling fully up to 7 mm. Even then, it's not fully penetrated. I'm going to add a 3 mm stopper to the depth gauge, making it 7.5 mm. I'm not sure if there's partial penetration, however, overall the stopper is not in contact with the template and the sinus floor is not fully penetrated. You can see it with your own eyes.
Now I'm going to use 10 millimeter drill and 2 millimeter stopper, so drilling up to 8 millimeter. Three point eight by ten millimeter one cast drill with two millimeter stopper. I could sense with my hands that the sinus floor was penetrated when I was drilling. Two millimeter stopper is used, so it's eight millimeters. The sinus floor has been penetrated. I used a ten millimeter stopper with a depth gauge, and you can see that it is in contact with the template. The sinus floor is penetrated. I asked the patient to blow with his nose to check if there was any problem. I'm going to lift the sinus using hydraulic pressure. Unlike the old kit with one cast kit, you don't need to remove the template to do hydro lift. In the 3cc syringe, there is 2cc saline. I'm proceeding slowly by 0.5cc, followed by aspiration. I'm repeating this process, and I have lifted the sinus floor by 1cc. As you can see, upon aspiration, the blood comes out together, and there's negative pressure, and therefore, sinus lift has been done without sinus membrane perforation. I'm going to use bone carrier with bovine bone AOS and then conduct bone graft. Bone graft is done on the sinus floor. In the past, you had to do hydro lift without the template. However, you can have the template on and use all sorts of tools and do hydro lift. Bone graft is also possible in this way. Sufficient bone graft is done. Because there is template, this was possible. Compared with cast kit, in the case of one cast kit, there is stopper and therefore there is much less possibility of sinus membrane being perforated when we penetrate the sinus floor. After bone graft is done, like Professor Park Chang-ju likes to do it, I'm going to do aspiration to get some saline out. If you do this, as blood and saline come out, the bone graft material becomes concentrated in the sinus floor. KS3BA surface 5.0 by 8.5 implant is going to be placed. In the case of hydrophilic BA surface, you need to irrigate it sufficiently before placing the implant because or else if it is in contact with saliva, biofilm can be formed. By doing this, we can prevent that. I am placing the implant with engine up to approximately 80%. And then I'm going to use implant driver and the torque wrench. I'm going to use my tactile senses to finish the implant placement. With the template on, I'm installing the implant. Initial stability is sufficient, approximately 30, 40 Newton centimeter. In regards to the depths, because the yellow of the template is slot and the marking in the implant driver are aligned, we can see that implant has been placed in the desired position. After removing the template, I wanted to check the initial stability by connecting smart peg. I've used Austal Beacon to measure. The ISQ value is approximately over 75. The initial stability is good, therefore 5.0 by 5 healing abutment has been connected. Surgery is now complete. As shown, I have used one cast kit for placing implant in the upper second molar area by doing hydro lift and bone graft. Crystal approach was used for implant placement.
As mentioned earlier, in the case of previous one casket, when doing hydro lift or bone graft, the template needed to be removed. However, the most recent one casket allows for template to be placed in its place during hydro lift and bone graft, as well as implant placement. You don't need to remove the template. Based on my experience, the previous version, it was quite rare for membrane to be perforated when penetrating sinus floor. However, if you use the latest one cast kit, because you use template and stopper together, you can precisely check and prevent the sinus membrane perforation even better. This is a single implant case and fairly simple. However, I wanted to show you the one cast kit procedure in detail and that is why I chose this case. Thank you for watching.